All right, everyone, let's get started. Our last panel for the day. We'll be hearing from Mark Hostler, a member of the appropriationist art group Negative Land, that um, seems to view getting sued as simply another piece of very complex performance art. And finally, from Whitney Broussard, a very prominent entertainment attorney whose firm's clients include, I think, Ludacris and Wyclef Jean and Third Eye Blind, India Ari, a lot of names you may have heard of. Um, Mark, and Government I'll, Mule and Warren Haynes. And Government Mule and Warren Haynes. How could I forget? Oh, Warren Haynes. Yeah. Mark, let's turn, the, let's turn the mic over to Mark Hostler. I neglected to mention, this is something we should have mentioned earlier today, you see the little black things in front of you on your various tables that I always think they look like little chocolates? Those are actually microphones that are turned on during the Q&A section, and they actually are very sensitive and pick up things like the buzzing of your laptop if it's too close and paper drumming and, you know, whispers you may be having Negative with your comments about panelists. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So um, please refrain from, you know, brushing or otherwise um, touching those things when the Q&A is going. Thanks. Mark, again? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Now, I think I have, a, I have a half an hour? Yes. Okay. So when we pass 15 minutes, you'll know I'm not hogging the mic. I'm, I'm, uh. Anyway, um, some of you may know something about the group I'm part of you. Some of you may not. Um, Negative Land's been around for almost 25 years now, unbelievably. And we, um, for, uh, since uh, I was 16 years old, uh, my friends and I have really enjoyed playing instruments, singing, doing normal things that normal musicians do, but we've also liked plugging things in the wrong way, making strange sounds with our devices, banging on guitars, with, you know, scraping them with uh, uh, serrated knives, and, uh, and uh, generally abusing technology to make fun and interesting sounds. And we also really liked, from the very, very beginning, mixing in things from our environment, and this would be this would be um, our parents baking in the kitchen or the dogs barking outside or an oscillating sprinkler going out in the yard. But I grew up watching four channels of TV. <laughs> so there was TV on all the time, and so it was very normal for us to mix that in, too. We mixed in media immediately in, in our work. The first record we did came out before I was out of high school. And we weren't trying to make a statement about this. We didn't know about copyright laws. We weren't trying to be activists or any of this uh, in our work. We just thought this sounded really cool. There was something intuitively exciting about taking things out of their context and, and presenting them in a different context. Again, this is in 79, this is 80. I wasn't hearing anyone else doing this. I'm sure other people were. But um, for us, it really felt like we, were, we felt like this, this seems new and different and exciting. Wow, cool. So. Our, our work kind of kept evolving, and we started doing a weekly radio show, which also generated a tremendous amount of, of audio archives, which we have uh, uh, continued to do the show to this day, and we have this inc insanely huge archive now of audio clips that are all cataloged and, and labeled and everything. The more we worked with this media that we were appropriating and mixing in with our original music and sometimes stealing other people's music, uh, the more we started thinking about, well, what are these people trying to say? What are we doing by taking this stuff? You know, uh, we, our, our th thinking about our work started to deepen a little bit. And I actually just want to get right away into a little sample of what we do so you can, you can sort of get an idea in case you haven't heard our work. Um, this is a piece that's called Freedom's Waiting. And we, um, the music's actually we composed. Hold on. But, I'll do, oh well, keep talking. Um, the music uh, we composed ourselves. The uh, spoken word bits are all taken from uh, uh, learning how to read records and from TV commercials. And uh, we set up kind of a, um, you think you know what this piece is about, but you don't until the very end when you'll get a little surprise of what it's actually about. And so um, this was made as an audio track. Many, many years later, we met up with a filmmaker named James Towning and collaborated with him on making this film. So the film is also all appropriated uh, imagery and collage. Uh, but just so you know, it, we, it didn't start out as a movie. It started out as just sound, and years later it turned into a film. But I think it's more fun to show you guys a movie. So this is Freedom's Waiting by Negative Land. Our Father, which art in heaven, 
humble words. We shall fight on the beach. We shall fight in the hill. We shall never surrender. Trenchant words. Give me liberty. Give me liberty. Won't give me death. Thundering words. The strongest words. The strongest word. The strongest word. Persuasive, persuasive, persuasive. The strongest word. The strongest word. The strongest word is still the word free. Hopefully you think it's about freedom, being free, but it's really just about the best words to use when you're selling products. And we actually made that in the wake of uh, uh, our first war in Iraq. That's kind of our, an oblique, our oblique reaction to it, I suppose. So um, our work is inspired by what we find. We actually don't set out to, to uh, go after targets or anything. We really stumble across stuff, and we get excited by it, and we want to make things out of it. And our work's always really been a hybrid of, of things that we, we find, we appropriate, uh, uh, we steal, whatever word you want to use, and things that we've made ourselves and mixed together. Um, 